Hi everybody, welcome to my second video on Erlang Basics TV and today we'll be looking at Part M. What is it? How is it structured? And how can you find what you're looking for within those regulations? Stay tuned. Hi guys, my name is Michael Svoboda and this is my second video. Thank you very much for the likes on the previous one. Thank you very much for the subscriptions. As I stated before, I'm starting out of this channel. So if you have enjoyed it, please subscribe, please comment, and please give me a like just to keep this channel going. Every airline, every operator uh, needs to manage the airworthiness of their aircraft. Uh, in Europe, this is done by means of FIASA Part M, which is a set of regulations on continuous awareness management. And in this video, I just want to show you basically how to go through it, where to find what you're looking for, and how to make sure you know what's in the regulation and where to find it if you, if you need to. So let's jump right into it and uh, yeah, and see where we are. Okay, so here we are now and in, um, in the table of contents for IASA Part M. Uh, now, if you don't know uh, where to find this document, uh, please see my previous video. That's exactly where I showed how you can find the regulations, how to download them from the IASA website um, and how to browse through them. So please check it out. Now for IASA Part M, we will only go quickly uh, through the table of contents with a very brief explanation on what is where. Now IASA Part M is divided into nine, am I correct? Yes, into nine subparts. Um, named by letters, so there's subpart A, subpart B, etc. And each subpart has suits a different purpose. Uh, and let's go through them quite quickly with the table of contents for Yaza Part M here. We will disregard the cover regulation for now. Uh, start right now with Annex 1, which is Part M, so that's what it's called. And we have Section A. There's two sections, Sections A and B. Section A are the technical requirements, which are actually the regulation for operators for airlines. Section B is meant only for the authority, which means we don't need to deal with it, we don't need to dive into it right now. We we'll only go through Section A. Section A is a scope of the regulation. It's one quick paragraph, nothing really to get into. Subpart B is accountability, and in MA201, the responsibilities uh, section of the, of the regulation will tell you who needs to be made responsible for what when it comes to the awareness of an aircraft. Uh, so this uh, Paragraph will give you guidelines on uh, on positions such as the accountable manager, the nominated post holder. Um, it will also give you guidelines on how to describe the responsibilities of certain personnel who is employed uh, within a continuous witness organization. And MA202 occurrence reporting that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, in case of any occurrence, an incident, an accident, uh, some of them need to be reported to the national authority. And if you want to know which need to be reported, how to report them, uh, that's exactly what you will find, and that's MA202. Let's go to subpart C, and that's continuing awareness. Subpart C basically tells you what continuous awareness is, what continuous awareness tasks are, what do we mean by the management of continuous awareness for an aircraft. MA301, the continuing awareness tasks, is a paragraph which will tell you what is understood by managing the awareness of an aircraft or a fleet of aircraft. MA302 deals with the aircraft maintenance program. This particular paragraph, MA302, uh, will tell you how the maintenance program is structured, what it needs to be based on, um, and how to create it, basically. Following that, MA303, the awareness directives, there's a special paragraph for it in the regulation, of course, as to what an AD or awareness directive is, um, how you need to manage it within a CAM or MA304, data for modifications and repairs. So if you do need to repair your aircraft, or if you want to modify it, if you want to change it from what it is to something else, you need to comply with specific requirements. For example, you need certain um, technical data to do it. This paragraph will tell you what exactly you need. MA305, Aircraft Continuing Awareness Record System. That's a paragraph that will clearly define how the record system in an awareness management organization needs to be structured. By record system, we mean, or they mean, what documents you need to keep, how long you need to keep them, um, how you need to record what has been done on the aircraft, how you need to monitor what needs to be done on the aircraft. MA306, the technical log system, is basically a system that allows 
for clear communication between the flight crew, the mechanics of the MRO and the awareness organization. So again, the structure of this system is described in MA-306. And MA-307 is a transfer of aircraft continuing awareness records. So basically, if the aircraft is being sold, if it's being redelivered to the leasing company, um, this paragraph will tell you how to do it. Subpart D, maintenance standards. Now, Subpart D defines, first of all, what you can do if the aircraft has a defect. Um, the, basic of, the basis, of course, is if the aircraft has a defect, it cannot fly. But there are exceptions, and, and that but is explained in Subpart D. What it also explains is the maintenance data that is required to perform aircraft maintenance, and it will also define who can do the maintenance for you. In case of commercial air transport, that would be an MRO approved in accordance with Part 145, which we will cover in a different video. Subpart D is components. That section will define how we classify components. So, of course, we have serviceable components, we have unserviceable components, uh, but there's also raw material, there's also so-called consumables, like grease, for example, and that, that sort of thing. Support E will classify how those components are certified in order for the operator to be able to install them on their aircraft. Also in MA502, it will specify who is allowed to do component maintenance, what categories of component maintenance there are, etc. One thing to look for in Support E is the certification of components, which of course is in EASA Form 1, but there are equivalent documents to any EASA Form 1. Uh, in this subpart, uh, will tell you which documents are equivalent, which documents you may accept. Furthermore, MA503 describes what service life limited components are. So MA503 gives you a clear definition of, of what they are and how a camera needs to deal with them. Subpart F is a subpart we will skip. Subpart F deals with maintenance organizations, but they're only maintenance organizations which are approved to perform maintenance on aircraft other than so-called complex aircraft, which encompasses all typically airline used aircraft like the you know Boeing 737s, the Airbus A320s, etc. And also a support F approved organization cannot do maintenance on commercially used aircraft. So in both cases it's not applicable to an airline. So let's scroll down. Now subpart G, this one is, um, again, they're all important. This one is important in the sense that the approval that is being granted by the authority to an airline is an approval based on part M subpart G. And here's why. Now subpart G deals with the continuing awareness management organization. This specific subpart deals with the organization. So it tells you how the organization needs to be structured based on what, what tasks it needs to perform how it needs to be approved by the authority, what the privileges are, what the, what the CAMO, because in short, a continuing awareness management organization is called a CAMO, what a CAMO can do. So if we go into subpart G, we have 701 is scope, 702 application, just the way you apply for the approval to your authority. 703, the extent of approval, basically the extent is what a CAMO can do, which aircraft they can manage. MA704, another important point, the continuing awareness management exposition, the KME. It's basically a procedures manual, it's a book, uh, which contains all the procedures by which CAMO works. All of them, from A to Z basically, everything a CAMO does and the way it does things is, descri is described in the KME. ME704 will tell you just that. It actually has a structure uh, for the KME and it will tell you exactly what needs to be included. ME705, the facilities requirements for a CAMO, personal requirements. So remember, in subpart A, we talked about uh, the personal responsibilities. Now here we have the personal requirements. So what requirements do those people need to fulfill in order to be able to perform the work um, that they're supposed to be performing? Awareness review stuff. Awareness review is, is basically a topic for a separate video. And uh, a CAMO may or may not be approved to conduct awareness reviews. That's up to the CAMO if they, if they want to get themselves certified for it. If they are certified for an awareness review, MA707 tells us the requirements for the staff that perform such reviews. MA708, Continuing Awareness Management, will describe all the tasks which need to be done by a CAMO. So it will tell you you need to create statuses. It will tell you you need to monitor ADs and monitor SBs and monitor life-limited parts, etc. All the specific things which need to be done in order to maintain continuous awareness of an aircraft, they will be described in MA708. MA709 documentation basically specifies to what documentation you need to have access if you are running a CAMO. 
typically that would be everything from the manufacturer of the aircraft, so a maintenance manual, an IPC, illustrated parts catalog, and several other documents which are being provided typically by the OEM. MA710, a witness review, which again describes the process of conducting an awareness review if the CAMO is approved to perform it. Privileges of the organization, well, they're pretty clear, but they're legally described in this uh, paragraph. MA712, the quality system. Every CAMO needs to have a quality system. And the way the quality system is structured is described in this paragraph, starting with the quality manager, quite often the compliance manager, which is, who is separate from the quality manager and the specific tasks are described within this uh, paragraph. MA713 changes if you do change something, for example, if you move from one office to another office, how do you inform the authorities? What changes do you need to make in your documentation? That would be MA713. MA714 record keeping, again, what records you need to keep from uh, the work you do? How do you record the current state of every aircraft. If you use computer systems, what kind of uh, security measures do you need to take for them not to be altered with? Mm, where do you keep your records? If they're pa paper records, you know, how, how, what kind of storage room you do you require? Uh, now we go to subport H. Subport H is again a subport which we will basically ignore for the sake of uh, my videos because the certificate of, re of release to service will be issued by a port 145 organization in case of commercial air transport with complex aircraft. And last but not least, subport I it deals with the awareness review certificate. The awareness review is uh, something required by IASA. The aircraft has a certificate of awareness, so-called COA, but that certificate is only complete together with an awareness review certificate or an ARC, ARC. The, the ARC is issued by a CAMO which has the approval to perform, to perform awareness reviews and subpart I describes how an awareness review has to be performed on an aircraft. Okay guys, this is it. It was pretty fast, uh, but I hope it gives you at least a brief overview of what PARDEM is and where to look for specific information. If there's a problem you have, uh, you can go directly to those regulations. You can pick the subpart which applies to your specific problem, even the paragraph, and read through it. Again, if you enjoyed it, if you liked it, Please subscribe to my channel, please leave me a comment down below in case I missed something, in case you have any comments towards my video, in case you have any questions uh, regarding this or any other subject, uh, I'd love to hear from you. Please also visit my uh, blog AirlineBasics.com, uh, which is linked down below, and my LinkedIn profile. I really would like to connect with you on LinkedIn professionally. Networking is very important in this business, so the more connections we have, the better. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.